Hi, welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast Lesson 6-4, Distributive Property. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote today is by Rodney Williams. Every day you have the opportunity to learn and experience something and someone new. Seize the opportunity. Learn and experience everything you can and use it to change the world. I think he probably thinks like I do, that learning is the most amazing experience and opportunity we have, but if we don't help those around us and use it to change the world, it kind of loses its luster just a little bit. Um, that's a picture of my family at Christmas. You can see our stockings behind us, and uh, you'll get to see some pictures of um, our kids in Africa doing some neat things. You seem to enjoy just seeing the pictures of their faces, so now you can see a little bit about their villages and their orphanages and where they live. Our learning goal is to use the distributive property to solve equations. Here's our individual lesson learning goals. Use the distributive property to make solving problems easier. Write expressions using the distributive property and solve equations using the distributive property. And you can see Juma, Sam, and Salome there with our friend Dylan. And those are the cars. See that one that Dylan's holding is like the one that Juma made and sent to me for my birthday last year. And then I just love that picture of the villagers in Ogoloi giving gifts to my friends. And see how that woman is holding the baby on her back? That's just kind of sweet, I think. We do have vocabulary today. The distributive property is something new. It's a strategy that lets you multiply a sum by multiplying each add-in separately and then adding or subtracting the products. So um, it's it's a way of breaking a number apart to make it easier to do mental math. If it doesn't make it easier, then there's no benefit to using the distributive property. That's my friend James who lives in Uganda too, and that's him in a boat, and then that's his father tending the fields. So here's our first example. It's 12 times 308. You can see um, the kitchen in Ogoloi where the women make the kids their meals. And in the bottom, that's in Freetown, Sierra Leone, that's at Abdul's school. And they're doing a little dance in front of their spelling list, but I don't think they dance while they spell. Let's go ahead and do that example, 12 times 308 using the distributive property. So I, we could multiply 12 times 308, but we're gonna use the distributive property and see if we can do more of it in our head. So when I look at the number 308, I see that I could write that out by saying 300 plus 8. So I'm going to do that. So I leave 12 times just the same, and then this, these parentheses just show that I'm breaking the 308 into 300 plus 8. So now I have 12 times 300 and 12 times 8. So I'm going to make two sets of parentheses, and then this is the thing. These parentheses because I'm writing 12 times 300, that operation symbol here goes right there, and 12 times 8, because I'm multiplying 12 times 300 and 12 times 8, so that multiplication symbol also goes here. And then the symbol that I put in between them is that addition symbol. The symbol in the middle will always be addition or subtraction in fifth grade when we use the distributive property. So you can see how I've made it much easier to multiply because I can use my mental math strategies. 12 times 3 is 36, and add my two zeros right there down here. And then 12 times 8 is 96. Oops, I don't need that parenthesis there. Just pretend like that's not there. 12 times 8 is 96, and now I can just add these two. I'm not going to rewrite the whole problem. I'm just going to write it like this. 0 plus 6 is 6. 0 plus 9 is 9, 6 plus 0 is 6, and 3 plus nothing is 3. Because you all like to see me put my commas in there. 3,696. We could check that by multiplying it the normal way, too. 12 times 308. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 0 is 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 times 3 is 6. X. O, 1 times 8 is 8, 0, 3, add them up, 6, 9, 6, 3. That's terribly messy in my problem, but at least I checked it so I know it's right. Number 1, 509 times 11. Pause it, push play, and when you're ready, we'll check your answer. Make sure you use the distributive property. We know you know how to multiply. We want to know if you can use the distributive property. 
Did you write 5,599? Let's see how we did that. So to use the distributive property, I'm gonna break apart this big number. I'm gonna write it as 500 plus nine and multiply them both by 11. My husband's watching a football game. I think something bad happened. Um, and then I can do 11 times 500 and 11 times nine. This is kind of written backwards from the example problem, but it's the same thing. It's 11 times 500 and 11 times nine. And then I put my addition symbol in the middle. So let's work these. 11 times five is 55 and bring down my two zeros plus 11 times nine is 99. And we don't even really need to write this out to add these up. Hopefully you can see that it's just gonna be, oops, there's my fancy five, 5,599. Number two, 12 times 47. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Don't forget to use the distributive property. Did you write 564? Let's see how we did that one. So if I wanna use my easiest mental math, I'm gonna break apart that 47. So I'll rewrite 12 times, put my parentheses, 40 plus seven. So it's just written in expanded form. And now this means I'm gonna multiply 12 times 40 and 12 times seven. So we'll put our parentheses out here, leaving a space in the middle for the operation. 12 times 40 and 12 times seven. So, and then our addition symbol right here is what we put between the two, because we're gonna add those up and we'll get the same answer. So use our mental math, 12 times four is 48, and bring down our zero, and then 12 times seven is 84, and if I add those up, like zero plus four is four, eight plus eight is 16, and four plus one is five. Number three, use the distributive property to find another expression for three times 2x plus seven. That's how you would read that, three times 2x plus seven. So we've got two different ways of writing multiplication inside that one expression. Go ahead and see how you do with that one. Pause it and push play when you're ready. You're just writing another expression. You're kind of solving that a little bit, but you don't have, you don't know what x means. And then we will show you how to do that if you didn't know how to do that already. Did you write 6x plus 21? You may not have. Let's go ahead and try that and see how you do that. This is kind of just a little tidbit here. Remember that this, when you have a number next to parentheses, I know Mrs. Tedder taught you this the other day, it means to multiply. So I'm gonna multiply this first, and then I'm gonna multiply this. So three times two is six, or three times two x, excuse me, is six x, because you just leave that there. And then we'll put our plus symbol right in the middle, and then write three times seven, which is 21. So that's kind of just a little bit of algebra that you haven't done yet, and um, maybe it gave you a little hint of what you can do in the future. There's Isaac in front of his house, and there's a beautiful tree in Africa. Here's our practice word problem, and we're just going to write an expression to show this. There were 49 inches of rain per day in Uganda in 2001. What is the number of inches of rain in 20 days? So we're gonna go ahead and write that as an, ex or excuse me, we're gonna use the distributive property to solve that. Go ahead and pause it, push play when you're ready. Did you write 980? Let's see how we did that. So we have 20 days where they got 49 inches of rain each day. So we're going to go ahead and break this apart. So we'll rewrite this just like it is and then break 49 into expanded form, 40 plus nine. And then we'll write it out with our double set of parentheses. Remember to leave a space in the middle for that plus sign. I can go ahead and put that there. I know it goes there now. So we have 20 times 40 and 20 times nine. 
and two times four is eight. Bring down those two zeros. And <laughs> two times nine is 18. Bring down that zero is 180. And you could do this using mental math, but we'll do it. Zero plus zero is zero, zero plus eight is eight, and eight plus one is nine. It's time to challenge yourself. Those are pictures of Abdul and Abdul at the beach. He's the one on the right at the beach. There were 1,071 centimeters of rain per day in Sierra Leone during the rainy season in 2008. What is the number of centimeters of rain over 40 days? Use the distributive property to solve. Show your work in your flip journal. Come back tomorrow ready to check your work. There's Bryson and Braden with Santa this year, and that is Paul Ekum. They say their last name first, so Ekum Paul in Uganda. He lives in Ogoloi. Go ahead and review your learning goals. Write down anything you don't understand. Distributive property can be kind of tricky the first time. We'll do lots of practice when you come back to class. Um, you have completed lesson 6-4, the distributive property. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.